Hi, I'm Connor Flick. I'm the cross organizing coordinator and the Arbor Project lead for the Kentucky Student Voice team. Hi, I'm Rachel Bellin. I am the managing partner of the Kentucky Student Voice team. What our team does is that we're really focused on making sure that student voice is incorporated into every education issue that's being discussed right now and that's on the table right now, and that includes ARPA. The work that the Kentucky Student Voice Team is so relevant right now because students not only can, they must be a part of these conversations about how federal dollars are going to be spent at the school level, who but students as the primary stakeholders knows exactly what is missing um, and what what they need more of in the system uh, students do what this project really allowed us to do is start that mobilization process on the grassroots level because what we saw for individual community members and for students alike is that there's a lot of misinformation and there's a lot of lack of education about or about what this does most students don't even know that ARPA is a thing. And so creating these media pieces and making sure that students are being heard on a statewide basis comes back to the grassroots once again and allowing us to come to individual districts and say, we have this work being done on a statewide basis. And here's how we can help your district specifically and your student body specifically in creating a better school system for you. When we conducted our project, we tried to do a lot of interviews with different students in different districts throughout Kentucky to understand what's going on in their schools and to get some big picture themes on what's happening in Kentucky schools to make sure that we were being responsive to that on a statewide level. So when we come to the media, we're talking about the issues that are relevant to students, and we're not just going off our own biases and assumptions. And what we found from interview to interview is that the questions that we were asking needed to be more flexible. Some students had amazing, great knowledge on ARPA and they were very involved in their communities and they knew exactly what issues need to be addressed with these funds and knew exactly all of the red tape that was going around this too. But we also found many more students who were uninformed about ARPA and who really didn't know what was happening. And so we need to provide context to them and we really need to make sure that we were asking about funding generally and really pulling on the threads that they were giving us about school issues, because oftentimes for many of these students, they've never been asked questions about how fun extra funding would really be helping their school day to day. We need to make sure that students are a part of this community and that student voice is being heard every single step of the way, along with the communities that are being served by these ARPA funds. It's not enough to just consult students once, devise some solutions on the administrator's own time on how they might respond to a couple of those problems, and then hand some solutions on from down high and saying, this is how we're going to fix your schools. Students need to be co-designing the solutions. We've really seen some districts be disappointing in the sense that they've only been talking to one or two select students that they already have on roll who are supposedly star students that don't represent their student body well. They weren't elected by the student body, they weren't chosen by the student body, and if they were, it's not a monolithic representation of who the students are. And as we talk more, and as this becomes a greater and greater issue as we move into 2022, 23, and 24 school years. With the Sea Common Ground Learning Community, we've been able to really pull on information and pull on different threads on ARPA that we wouldn't be able to think about beforehand. This work can feel, it's radical. And so sometimes radical stuff can be really isolating too. Uh, it was so nice throughout the course of the ARPA work to have a community of practice, to have people in other states who shared not only their incredible earned wisdom and knowledge, but their camaraderie throughout this process. The Accelerator made this work fun, and so I would encourage anyone else uh, participating in an Accelerator to lean into that joy of doing this work across the country, across multiple states, uh, with really diverse, amazing other people. The biggest piece of advice that I could give for future uh, Action Accelerator participants really is, is to go for it, to go all in on the project that you have and to really make sure that you're serving the people that you claim to be serving. If you're really connecting with your community, if you're sitting down having that empathy and having those conversations, if you're seeking common ground with people, that's going to make you most successful. And if you really pursue that and you really push after that process, 
like that's going to be the thing that sets you apart from every single other organization, maybe not in the accelerator, but from all the other nonprofit organizations that are working on education and work on this issue today.